to pieces. Ram -bum -bum. Each time I see you again, I fall to pieces. Well, no, no, no. I don't remember the words. Ah, <laughs> that's funny. So yeah, I should probably look those up. I thought I remembered them better than that. Ready? I fall to pieces. Bum bum bum. Each time I see you again. Bum bum bum. I fall to pieces. Do do do. How can I be just your friend? You want me to act like we've never kissed. You want me to forget, pretend we never met. And I've tried, and I've tried, but I haven't yet. You walk by and I fall to pieces. Hi guys, welcome to Bell's Bargains. My name is Amy. I can't believe I couldn't remember the words. Ah, age. Should we talk about age? Let's not. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I sang that song because I'm going to show you some pumpkin stuff. And one of them says fall on there. See? Yeah. Now you get how I got there, huh? So I made these for a challenge and then realized, oh gosh, does it matter? Like I'm, I had the date wrong and then it was for the month before and oh my goodness it happens so but that's okay i'm gonna share them with you um because i think they came out pretty good so it was supposed to be like stash uh, craft your stash pumpkin challenge so i did craft my stash and what's my stash here it's trash my stash is trash and i used it okay so i'm going to show you these in the order that i made them because this is how they came to my creative process as I started to make these. I have three um, crafts to show you today and the first one I'm really proud of. I think you guys are gonna like this too. Now remember, for those of you who don't know, but this is probably being watched mostly by my besties, said I moved to Mexico, didn't bring all my craft supplies, not gonna buy a bunch of craft supplies, so I'm crafting with trash. So that means I save cardboard, packages, tissue, dryer sheets, I save everything. I even save the coconut when I buy a coconut from the coconut stand. All right, which I'm just gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna throw it up here. So this is our Marmy Adventure number one, which is Mark's Namey Adventures here in Cabo San Lucas. And that adventure was when we went to the coconut stand and that coconut is in this first craft. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? Oh yeah, you are. Okay, ready? Ma -na 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 -na. It is a door, look, I can't even show you the whole thing. Can you see it all? There you can see it. So this is, it's at my front door. Like I have this leaning at my front door and I'm super proud of it. Hmm. No, it's not a piece of wood. And no, these right here, those are not pumpkins. All right. So let me just, I'm just going to show you how I made this because I think that's just, that's just the best way. what the water thing came in and I'm gonna cut it up and use it to make my um, front door stand and I'm just telling you showing you there and I'm gonna cut it all apart so there's all my pieces all apart I keep all the pieces so I'm gonna use them in different things but the two main pieces the larger ones are what I'm gonna use here and I'm basically gonna cut them in half and then layer them on top of each other so I cut them all in half now I'm gonna have four pieces and I take just Elmer's glue, put it all down, lay them all on top of each other, and then put a couple of heavy things like water and the little karaoke cereal thing and let them dry overnight. 
So now I have them all dry and I'm going to take water and some white acrylic paint and I'm going to whitewash this. Now I'm whitewashing it because the color of the cardboard in the background gives it almost a wood feel when I whitewash and you can still see some variations in the color. The only thing is I'd be careful about trying to get all the um, the writing covered up, right? And um, this side was the smoothest. So in hindsight, I think if I glued it together and really thought about it, I could have had a side without any writing on it. Doesn't matter, I didn't, and it's fine because it all worked out. So <laughs> I'm like, so I just whitewashed that and let that dry. And then I get this brown bag, which was we um, took leftovers home from some expensive restaurant, and they sent our leftovers home in this brown bag here in Mexico. So it was just trash because um, I can't really reuse it for anything. And so I'm cutting it apart and it's going to make perfect, look there's even food left on it, um, little strips to frame this out in. So I take um, Mod Podge, go it along, and I frame this whole sign except for the bottom. Because I don't need to do the bottom because it's going to have the pumpkins on it. And then I sort of just whitewash that, but you can see there's a variation in the framing and the sign itself. Now I'm going to freehand Hello Fall. In hindsight, I should have done something in Spanish. I didn't, you know, it's okay. We're still adjusting to living here in Mexico right now. Um, so I just freehanded it with just a, a, this is like a charcoal pencil. And I had already sort of laid my pumpkins on the bottom so I knew how far down I wanted to go. And then I'm just taking marker and I'm just, you know, thickening the places where it should be thicker and so on and so forth. And I'm going to get my Hello Fall written down there. I went over like, uh, fonts and whatnot. In the end, I just love the cursive F, so I went with that even though it's not really cursive, the other, the A and the two L's, but sort of, kind of, I don't know. Anyway, it, it looks good, so we're okay with it, whatever it is. And then after I get this, I'm going to color in um, and darken them as I see needed. And obviously I have no lettering here, so I'm just kind of uh, left to markers because um, I don't have any any stick-on letters or anything, which is fine. I'm actually okay with the freehanding. I kind of like to do it. It's almost very artistic, so I like it. Okay, so once I get this done, then I'm going to move on to getting these coconut husks on. Look at this, you guys. So there's the inner part of the coconut. Remember, I only had half a coconut that I brought home that day. So this is just half coconut that I let sit outside and dry completely out. And I was able to separate the inside from the outside. So I have the husk, which is actually in two pieces. And I'm going to use the second piece here in a second. And then that's the inner like skin of the actual coconut thing. But don't they look like pumpkin shaped? I think this is, I, I love this. And so then I'm just going to glue that little piece that broke off. But we're going to make it look like a third pumpkin. This looks so good. I'm very impressed with myself, I just got to say. And then I'm just taking these random pieces of wood that I have found out in, you know, on my walks. And I'm just putting them on there as like the, um, you know, what do you call it? The trunks, the stem of the pumpkin. And then I'm going to take corn husk that I've shredded up. And we're going to do a little filling in. Like right there, I took a little piece just to make it look more like the pumpkin um, completed. And I'm throwing some corn husk in to fill in some of the little areas so that you don't see the gaps. I just think this is so cool. <laughs> you got that. I'm really proud of myself on this one. Can you tell? And then I'm taking my corn husk and I'm putting little toppers on them. It's like a little bow made out of corn husk. I mean, not corn husk. I'm saying corn husk. I mean coconut husk, you guys. This is coconut husk. Which, by the way, it takes a lot of strength to pull it apart. Um, so I did. Anyway. And now I'm going to put a border on this. So I'm just using my post-it note as my guide, right? So three little dots and then dash lines and just go around. It's just adding that little bit of color in there. And it's like the orange, just like I'm basically the pumpkins are. And now I'm going to take orange paint and I'm going to highlight our husk here. We're just going to sort of a, it's just a wash of paint color, by the way. I have water over there. I guess it's off camera, but I do have water over there. And so I'm just giving them a little bit more orange, brighter on the bigger one. And then I'm adding also a little tiny bit of like a yellow gold in there too, just to, to mix it up. You guys know I love to paint, right? This is like my favorite thing to play with colors. 
Um, and then we're just going to do it on that one too. And I don't go as heavy and I just stick to more of just the top of it. And then this one I go kind of all over it. And then um, just to really finish off those pumpkins after I let them dry from their paint, I do take a marker and just sort of highlight their, um, their like uh, crevices from their lines, I guess is what I would say. Oh, right here I'm adding a little bit of paint, like shadow in the background. And at first I was going to do like shadow of pumpkins, which I started to do there. And then I went, no, that's dumb. And instead I just sort of take some paint and just sort of uh, watercolor it in the back, just like it's a shadow, which I actually liked a whole lot better. Okay, and that very effective for filling in that bottom too. Now I'm going to take my marker and see what I'm saying. I'm just like giving it its, I don't know what the correct, there's got to be a word for the crevices on a pumpkin, right? There has to be. Anyway, so I'm giving it its little its little lines. And I use more than one color because I'm looking for some variations in those colors on each one of them. Look, that one's like a purple that I'm adding on there, but it's very effective over some of the orange and the red. Anyway, so I get that all done. And they look so good, my little pumpkins down there. Oh, I love it. And now this is the ribbon that came off of a blanket that I bought at Costco and it was Velcro holding the blanket together and I have no rhythm here ribbon rhythm I have rhythm I have no ribbon but it was just so plain and so I take a uh, paintbrush and white paint and I polka dot it let it dry and now I have this cute little polka dotted ribbon and I'm going to make a center for my ribbon using some more of that coconut husk and some twine to tie it together and then I'm going to put my ribbon into a little bow I got to knot my ends you know I always knot my ends look at that mm-hmm on my string. I'm putting a little bow from that on top of the uh, coconut husk stuff. And I fiddle with that and fiddle with that and get it just right. Come on, Amy, move on. And then I'm going to take my ribbon, which is going to be the final thing. And we're just going to make, uh, just, I was just checking on my size there. Just going to make a little bow. We're going to knot it with um, some of that twine. And then we're going to add our little Corn, I'm knotting my ends, my tails, like I always do. And then I just, around the very top, I wrap my twine around, I think like three times. Knot it off. I always knot mine off. I know people always um, hot glue them down. I just knot it off. I'm going to add more tails with it, because I might as well. The more the merrier up there. And then I put my little um, coconut husk on and tie that off. And then I glue my tails down, just because they were kind of flopping all over. And there's no wire on this ribbons, so I kind of glued them kind of how I wanted them. I don't normally do that, but I did in this instance because it's going to be sitting outside. I don't know why. Okay, but I did. All right, and there you go. That's it. I love this piece. I hope you guys do too. gave it a whole um, border there you can see the cardboard on the back but I gave it that border and just covered up where I layered all these things it's so cool and I'm just in love with my coconut pumpkins I mean right and this has been out at our front door isn't that an ugly front door by the way yeah it is but I love where we live but it's an ugly front door but this has been out there now for I want to say three weeks and it's holding up just fine and how about the ribbon that I made from the, it was a blanket that I bought at Costco, a throw blanket, which Jax keeps trying to steal from me. And, um, you know, it was wrapped in that ribbon. And then just adding the polka dots, I think was just a nice little touch. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So the next one that I made, as I'm picking up trash, and I've told you guys like this, you know, like I just find like blocks of wood or pieces of wood and I just keep grabbing them all. So um, I love this. I don't know that it's for everybody because I didn't use traditional pumpkin colors purposefully um, because I wanted to do it this way. So yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. If you don't like these colors, 
You can, of course, do it in whatever colors you want. I went with Halloween colors for my pumpkins. And I guess you can buy plastic pumpkins all these colors, so I don't know why it's not okay. Look at my pumpkins. Okay, see my toppers on these? Do you know what those are? They're the tops of the habanero chilies that I bought Marcus and I stuffed for him. So, I went to Costco, bought habanero chilies, and I stuffed them, and the tops were so cute and curly cute. I'm like, oh, I need those for my pumpkins. I definitely need those for my pumpkins, and so that's what I did. Now, I wanna say something. Well, hold on, just watch how I made these. This one is so easy. I didn't even mix colors, you guys. I just stayed with those three very Halloween colors. By the way, these pumpkins look really cute next to Esmeralda, my witch. Okay, so I'm just, at first I started to paint it on really thick, and I was like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. So I kind of used my leftover whitewash paint there and used it to sort of whitewash on to these pieces of wood because, of course, I want slightly bit of the grain of the wood to show through. And that's going to be my tallest one right there, obviously. And I left the orange for the shortest one, shortest one, which would be in the front because it's predominantly the pumpkin color that we all know and love. All right. Can you guys see all the dirt on this? As a matter of fact, as I'm painting this, you'll see some of the dirt fall off. But I love that because it was texture underneath the paint. And that was exactly what I wanted. I know it's the, like, it's the little things. Like how important was that to me? It was because, again, it added so much texture. And, um... Look at my color changing as I'm dipping it in for the water. It doesn't matter. See, you guys, it just doesn't matter. That color is great. And then I'm going to go to, I already did the orange one and I didn't film it, but that's okay. So now I'm going to tie them all together after they've all dried. I think I just go around once or twice. I tie it in the front um, and I just not, and I put nothing else on there. This craft is so simple, but I love it because it's like a little accent piece for your decorations, not my ends. Now take my coffee. It's instant coffee that was left here from the previous renter, and we don't use instant, so I was like, I'm gonna use it in crafting. So I made a little instant coffee with water there, stuck some of that twine in there to get it a different color. I didn't want it to be the same color as the twine that I've wrapped the blocks of wood with because this is sort of gonna be my raffia pieces on top of my pumpkins. Now this is what I love, habanero peppers. And the tops were so cute, I'm like, God, it just looks like cute little curly cute pumpkin tops. I did not cover them in Mod Podge because I think these are going to dry out just fine, but if I ever needed to, obviously I could change them or I could cover them in Mod Podge and seal them in. I did not and because I, I thought we were okay. Now here I'm taking my twine and I'm tearing it all apart, but look how it's a different color from the instant coffee. The things you come up with when you don't have craft supplies, right? And so I just sort of separate them so they're all little like stringy pieces so it's going to look more like a raffia or a grass topper on top of these pumpkins. And then I just make little groupings, tie it together, and then I'm just going to glue them at the very top. And then after I put those on, I was like, oh, I forgot I was going to add, um, I don't know what you call the dark part, dark part around the stem of the pumpkin on top. I was going to add the colors, and I forgot to do it before I glued these down, so I had to paint around it. But that's okay. What I did was took all three of my colors and put them on different pumpkins so that there was, um, they matched the three colors of the pumpkins, and it was a different color on the very top. So what's that area called right there, right? I don't know. Anybody? Somebody tell me down below. And so I do purple on the green. I think I do the green on the orange, and orange on the purple. So anyway, I thought that was just an effective little way of in simulating that sort of looks like a pumpkin. I love this little pumpkin stash. I hope you guys like this little pumpkin stash. Stack, stash, grouping, whatever you would call it. Um, I think they came out really cute. All right, let's move on to the next pumpkins. The neutral pumpkins are next. I 
adding the little color on the tops that complemented the other pumpkins. I really like this. This is just that string, which I dyed in coffee and, you know, made it my own little raffia because I don't have any. But see how beat up this front one is? It just looks like a pumpkin. Now, I'm going to tell you, you know, see how, like, there's a chunk of, of orange missing there? I did not wash these. I brought them home. I painted them. I might have knocked them off as I threw them in my bag on my walk, but I didn't wash them. And the reason I didn't wash them is because I wanted them to literally have that rustic, like maybe the paint doesn't stick to it and there's dirt on it. I wanted that. So I love these. I think it's just a super cute little grouping of three little pumpkins. And tell me down below in the comments, what do you think of my color choice? Marcus didn't like it, but, but what is Marcus now? Golf carts. Yeah. So yeah, we don't. We don't take what he says too seriously. Okay, now my final one that I did here. It is mostly trash. There's some of it that's not trash, but I mean, um, I'm gonna use the rest of my coconut husk in this craft, and I think it's very neutral. I just went really neutral, and I just made a little box full of pumpkins, full of neutral pumpkins. So let's go through this. I'm just gonna do like this. This is a box that I got at the 22 peso store. And you're gonna see that I, I stain it with just, um, did I use coffee water? I might have used coffee water or watered down brown paint. I can't, I think it's coffee water because um, that gives it a nice stain. And there's the remainder of my coconut husk. It's my little bed in there. This would make a great manger thing too. Anyway, and then um, I made just the regular, you know, twine pumpkin. Jack's got this. He's a little distorted now. And I decided not to fix it because I'm probably just going to take it apart because I'm, you know, I don't have room to store decorations. I love this one, which was, why am I talking? Let's watch. So this is a little box that I got at um, at my 22 peso store. Oh, you know what that is? That's my leftover coffee from the stuff that I stained for the pumpkins. And so I was like, ah, I might as well use it. It'll be like stain. And it is. It works great. It just darkens that wood up just enough. And this is a very neutral, very natural looking craft. So, all right. And here all I'm doing is winding string around my fingers to make the little string pumpkin. I don't know if there's a better way to do this, but this is how I did mine. So I probably should have gone and searched how to make these. I didn't. It worked out fine until Jax got a hold of it, and then he kind of wonkied it. But um, all I do is just knot it off and then sort of fluff it around and make it into a pumpkin shape. Get my little piece of stick there, and I'm just going to stick my stick in the middle with a little bit of hot glue. And voila, <laughs> a little pumpkin. Which is going to look super cute in my little basket that's going to get filled with um, coconut husk. So that was it to this pumpkin. Oh no, I add a little, I add a little coconut husk to the top of them. I don't think I do. I can't remember. See? Because it was a while ago now that I made these. But anyway, I'm just fluffing with the string. Too much film in this, in here about this, but you can see. And by the way, by looping it on my fingers, they weren't all exactly the same. And I like that because it gave me inner loops and outer loops which I thought made it look more like a pumpkin. Okay, so this is my Amazon envelope. We can see that, right? And um, I'd saved it because I'm saving trash because I'm reusing trash and toilet paper roll. And so at first I take it and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna figure out how much I need to be able to make it. So cut that off because I just need this square here. But I take tape and I go over this to try and lighten that because I was trying to remove it. In the end, I just hit it in a crease, but it did lighten it quite a bit by putting the tape on there. And then I think I take a little sanding paper, like, can I get it off there? I really couldn't. It's fine though, because like I said, I do hide it in the crease. You don't end up seeing it at all in the final product. So I go to wrapping it, I'm pushing it in there, and then I realize I probably need a little something to hold the volume or the mass, right, on the inside. So I take a paper bag, and um, I just wrap it around the middle there just to give it a little um, girth, I guess, to my pumpkin. 
And then I just start weaving it or pulling it over to the center and gluing it inside the toilet paper roll. Toilet paper roll was perfect for this, which I save all those too. And <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like gluing, and you'll see when I get to the printed part, like I just like, okay, let's tuck that in, make sure that doesn't show. It's right about there. There we go. Tuck it all, tuck it all in, and make sure that doesn't show. And of course, this was the Amazon um, envelope had like bubble on the back, so that really helps like give it some form and hold the form. Then I take a little coconut um, husk stuff, shove it down in the um, toilet paper roll because I just want to have something in there to hold the stump to, and then add a graphia. Okay, that was super easy and cute. All right, so this is a placemat, and I go to cut apart the placemat because I want to make this pumpkin, but I'm so stupid. Um, I went to try and cut... Um, like sections, but then it just starts to unravel. So now I have all these little sticks. I'll make something with them. I was okay, Amy, that wasn't very smart. Um, you have to secure it before you cut it with some hot glue. So I cut again, and now this time, I kind of know where I'm going to cut my sections, and so, but look at this piece. I'm going to make something out of that. Looks like firecrackers. Okay, so I just sectioned it off because I'm going to make little sections to make my pumpkin out of, and once I knew where those sections were, then what I did was I popped a little hot glue at where the seam, where I'm going to cut the string at, and then that way it didn't come apart, and that worked perfectly. In hindsight, if I could have done this fluid and not cut it into sections, but in my mind, this was how I was building it. Um, you know, we always learn as we go. So then I'm making little circles, basically, but then I'm going to punch them in and almost make them like a heart. When we're all done, you'll see. So I take a cut, I'm making all my little circles. I think I end up with like three, there we go. And I'm making little hearts, I call them. But see how they're like little sections now? And there's three of them, and as I glue these together, it's gonna be a really tall pumpkin. And I'm gonna put a stem on it and some of our coconut um, shreds. So I got them all there, and then I just start gluing them together. And then after I glue the three pieces together, I glue the outside pieces so it'll hold its form. See, can you see my little pumpkin form there? I hope so. <laughs> I see it. Anyway, um, yeah, like I said. So then I'm going to add a stem, and I'm going to add the coconut shred. And then I take all the rest of the coconut shred that I have after I'm done with this, and I'm going to throw it into the bottom of our coffee-stained little box. And this was a very neutral project, so I did not add any color. I went completely neutral, which for some people is perfect. There you go. so cute and this is just wood that I found these are little wood pieces that I find when I'm out on my walk same with this one but this one did you see how I well I think I told you in my voiceover how I messed it all up but in the end I think this came out really cute um, it's sort of like this you know a very tall with um, pronounced ridges on it which a lot of pumpkins do have that and this is just my little neutral basket full or container I don't know what would you call this yeah I don't know, it's something full of pumpkins, my neutral pumpkins, yeah? Do you guys like that one too? All right, so you gotta tell me in the comments down below which one of these was your favorite. I have to say, I think my packaging brown pumpkin is just like, I think that's the best, but it's the coconut pumpkins and this sign, which I'm, I just think is so proud. I freehanded that, yeah. I'm getting better at my freehanding on my letters. All right, so everybody, Tell me which one down below, which is your favorite. Thanks so much for watching this today. Um, I know it's really late to be doing pumpkins and I won't be doing any more. It's gonna be Christmas or just everyday stuff from now on. I do have a challenge coming up this weekend and it's, um, it's the what would you make? Is that tomorrow? I think it's tomorrow. And um, I'm not doing Christmas. I'm doing 
I read, anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, well, it doesn't, it's the chair that I kind of show you guys once before, so I finish up that chair. You need to see that one. All right, everybody. Have a great day, great week, and great life. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you love this video. Please leave a comment down below because that helps. And subscribe if you like it because it's free. You know? I mean, come on. It's free. It's like literally free. Okay. And then you can put that bell on for the notifications, but yeah. It's up to you. What do you want to do? All right. Um, and tell me which one is your favorite, please. If you're still here with me right now, write pumpkin in the comments down below. That would be great. And you guys, I'll see you next time here on Bella's Bargains. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, a great day, a great day, a great week, a great day, a great week, a great life. And as always, from your singing crafty crafter, I fall to pieces when I find the clearance rock. Which is very true. Happy bargain, sh happy bargain hunting shopping. Happy bargain shopping. I should just have happy hunting bargain shopping. I'm not sure. It's a tongue twister no matter what. All right. See you next time here on Bella's Bargains. Toodles. Effingham didn't. Not Effingham. Ferdinand. You guys, I keep forgetting about Ferdinand. I'm going to have to work on this, you know. Ferdinand, I'm really sorry. Ferdinand? I think Ferdinand's man. Ferdinand? Can you, can you what? says he won't be shut out anymore. I'll work on that. All right, guys. Till next time. Toodles.